Intramuscular injections are a commonplace activity in the care of patients in hospital and the community. A variety of drugs, such as painkillers and antibiotics, can be delivered using this route, and a good injection technique can make the experience relatively painless. Depending on the site chosen to deliver the drug, one to five mils can be injected into a well-perfused muscle, providing rapid systemic action. The intramuscular route is ideal for some drugs that are released over a long period of time, as they will be released steadily when injected into a healthy muscle. This presentation will enable you to locate the specific muscles used for intramuscular injections and explain the rationale for their use. Identify how to prepare the skin prior to administration of an intramuscular injection and explain and demonstrate the correct technique of administering an intramuscular injection. The sites available for an injection are deltoid, dorsogluteal, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis and ventrogluteal. If a patient is to be given an intramuscular injection, you should consider, is the person receiving regular intramuscular injections? If this is the case, the site of delivery should be rotated to avoid possible complications, such as sterile abscesses forming. Wounds, cellulites or any area that is damaged or bruised should be avoided. The patient's general physical condition should be considered. It may not be appropriate to deliver an injection into a muscle area if there is low muscle mass or atrophy, such as in elderly patients. Avoid delivering an injection into a contracted muscle, as this will be very painful and it will be difficult to fully administer the medication. Finally, ensure that you are able to reach the muscle when delivering an injection. Obesity needs to be considered, as medications may be delivered into the adipose layer, causing misdistribution of drugs and altered absorption times, as well as being possibly irritant to the adipose tissue. Prior to giving any medication, ensure that the five rights of medication administration are followed. Right person, right medication, right dose, right route, and right time. When administering intramuscular injections to children, if possible, have their parent present to help reduce any anxiety. Use a one inch child size needle instead of the one and a half inch needle used for adults and provide plenty of reassurance and praise before, during and after the procedure. In preparation for the procedure, it is important to respect and maintain the patient's dignity. An alcohol skin swab should be used to clean the area of the injection site. To do this, clean the skin in a spiral motion from the inside out, allowing the skin to dry before the injection is given. This could take up to 30 seconds. When the skin is dry, using the non-dominant hand, stretch the skin slightly over the chosen site to displace the subcutaneous tissue. Using the dominant hand, hold the syringe like a dart. Quickly and firmly insert the needle into the patient at a 90 degree angle until one centimetre of the needle is left showing. Withdraw the plunger slightly to confirm that the needle is in the correct position and has not entered a blood vessel. If blood is not present, depress the plunger and carefully inject the solution at a rate of one mil every 10 seconds. However, if blood is present, stop the procedure and withdraw the needle and syringe. You will need to restart the procedure with new equipment and drug. After administering the drug, wait 10 seconds to allow it to diffuse into the tissues and then quickly withdraw the needle. Discard the needle and syringe immediately into a sharps container. Do not resheath the needle. Record the administration of the medication within the medication chart to show that it has been given. You should return to the patient 15 to 20 minutes later to observe the injection site and check the effectiveness of the medication. The z track technique is recommended to be used when delivering intramuscular injections as it enables the medication to be sealed in place by the subcutaneous tissue. To do the technique, using the non-dominant hand, pull the skin two to three centimetres sideways or downwards from the injection site. By doing this, 
the skin and subcutaneous tissues slide over the underlying muscle by one to two centimetres. Using the dominant hand, hold the needle at a 90 degree angle and pierce the skin in a dart-like motion until one centimetre of the needle is left exposed. Aspirate for blood. If no blood is seen, slowly inject the medication at one mil per 10 seconds. If blood is seen, do not inject. Withdraw the needle and start again with new equipment. Once the medication has been injected, withdraw the needle and quickly release the tension on the skin, sealing in the medication. The deltoid muscle is easily accessible, but should not be used repeatedly for injections. Due to its low muscle mass, volumes between 0.5 of a mil to 1 mil can be injected. The deltoid muscle area is located by first visualising a straight line horizontally 2.5 to 5 centimetres below the area of the acromial process, depending on the individual's muscle mass. A second horizontal line is then drawn from the midpoint of the arm, in line with the axilla. Between these lines, a triangle with its apex touching the lower line and base at the upper define the area where the injection should be delivered into the muscle. The vastus lateralis and rectus femoris site can be used for deep intramuscular injections of up to 5 mils. It's recommended that the z track technique is used when injecting this site. It is located between one hand's depth from the greater trochanter and one hand's depth from the knee joint. This area is commonly referred to as the upper outer quadrant. It is located by drawing two imaginary lines. The first, a horizontal line from the greater trochanter to the iliac spine. The second line is drawn vertically through the midpoint of the first. The upper outer area is where the injection should be placed. The z track technique is recommended for injections into this muscle of up to 5 mil volumes. The ventrogluteal site is considered safe for adults and paediatric patients over the age of seven months. It is the ideal site to deliver large volume injections of five mils as it is relatively free of major nerves, blood vessels and within literature is the site of choice for bariatric patients. The site is easy to locate and has a greater thickness of muscle and lower covering of subcutaneous fat making inadvertent injection of medication into the subcutaneous layer less likely. The area has multiple small nerves and blood vessels allowing for rapid absorption and systemic action of medications injected. In order to locate the ventrogluteal muscle, place the heel of your hand over the greater trochanter of the patient's hip with your wrist perpendicular to the femur. Ensure that your index finger points towards the anterior superior iliac spine. Spread your middle finger to form a V. The injection site will be in the middle of the V as shown here.
Thank you for watching this tutorial.